Before we move on with the course, I would like to do a brief lecture with all the basic terminology that you need to know to feel comfortable during the course. If you have experience with trading, just go ahead to the next video, but if this is new to you, don't worry, we will walk you through the basics. Also, there will be an attached PDF that you can use at any time. Let's start with the ask price. This is the price the traders pay when buying an asset. Usually, this is the higher of the two prices that you will see on the trading platform. Bid price. This is the lower of the two prices that traders use when selling the asset. Most of the time on the price chart, you will see the bid price. And this is why when you buy, the entry order shows a slightly higher price than the current price on the chart. A trade gets executed using the ask price. Spread the ask price minus the bid price. Let's say the euro dollar price is at 118 on the chart. This is the bid price. If the spread is 1 pip, then the ask price will be 118.01. The spread is what the brokers earn when people trade. We buy on the ask price and we sell at the bid price. So we pay the spread to the broker. Just like the difference between the buy and the sell prices in the banks and the exchange bureaus. PIP. This is a measurement for the price in forex trading. It is the third and the fourth digit after the decimal comma. If the price for euro dollar rises from 118 to 11805, we can say that the price increased by 5 pips. If it rises to 118.30, we say that it grew by 30 pips. Only the yen currency pairs are different. There the pips are first and the second digits after the decimal comma. If the price for dollar yen rises from 130 to 130.20, we would say that the dollar yen rised with 20 pips. The last digit, which is the third for yen currency pairs, and it is the fifth digit for all the rest is what is called point. And we don't usually pronounce it when reading the price. If the price is at 118.53, we would say the euro dollar is at 118.50. Some brokers have just four digits, so they do not display the points. Swap. This is the cost we pay to the brokers when we hold our positions until the following day. So every time the broker transfers a trade to the next day, they will charge a swap. However, that is not always a loss for the traders. Many times the broker has a positive swap. Usually, this is when we hold the position that is against the primary trend. Commission. Not all of the brokers will charge you a commission. This is a cost we pay when opening a trade. The average commission is between 5 and 10 dollars per lot. So, if your broker charges you more, you better change the broker. Lot. Unit of measurements used when trading. One lot equals 100,000 of the base currency. If we trade euro dollar, the euro is our base currency and the dollar is the quoted currency. There are also mini lots that represent 10,000 of the base currency and micro lots that represent a thousand units of the base currency. And most often we use regular lots because we have the option to trade smaller amounts like 0.1 lot, which would equal to 10,000 units and 0.01, which equals to 
thousand units. Leverage. If we use the leverage, that means that we use borrowed money from the broker. That is usually a good thing, but it might be risky. Using leverage allows traders to amplify their profits, but conversely, there is a risk of amplifying our losses proportionally. So the right usage of leverage depends a lot on using good money management. Margin. This is the amount of money that we need to deposit with the broker to cover some or all of the credit risk. Or simply put, this is the money that we deposit with the broker at the money that will be used to buy different assets. CFD contract for difference is the most popular way of participating in the forex market. When we open an account with a broker and we fund it with certain amount of money, we can start trading. But usually we use CFD trading. That means that we don't physically buy assets like what we do with cryptos on the relevant exchanges. We just trade on the value of the asset. Every time we buy, we create a contract with the broker that if the price goes in our favor, we will benefit from that movement. And if the price goes against us, we will lose from that movement. And here are some slang words. Long. If we say we go long, that means that we buy the asset. So if we have purchased the asset, we can say that we have a long trade or a long position. We expect the base currency to increase in value relative to the quoted currency. Short. Short trade means that we are selling the asset or base currency or when we have sold, we can say that we are holding a short trade or shorting an asset. Bullish, a term used when the market is moving in an upwards direction. We can say that the price is very bullish. That would mean that the price is currently moving upwards. Or we can say that the market is bullish. It comes from bulls that are pushing the price up. Bearish. Conversely, there are bears and they push the price down. We can say I am bearish with euro dollar. That would mean that I'm selling it at the moment or I expect it to go down.